Hello, and welcome to this session of Hayes University, presented by Hayes Mechanical, your partner in providing best-in-class commercial HVAC, plumbing, and industrial mechanical services for over a hundred years. In this video, we will cover the steam steel tube boiler washout. We will review the procedures involved with a boiler washout, discuss why washing out your boiler is essential for your equipment and its performance. We'll also review a few boiler basics, not all washout procedures will be covered in this video, and some procedures may not be applicable to your equipment. So please contact your Hayes Mechanical representative to learn more about the specific needs of your system. Before we discuss the boiler washout process, let's take a look at the system we're working on today. This is a 400 horsepower Scotch Marine style steam steel tube Burnham boiler. This boiler is one of three boilers in this university's central steam plant. To begin the boiler washout process, the boiler is first safely shut down and locked out. After the boiler has been shut down, the water is drained from the boiler. While the boiler is draining, we can open the fire side of the boiler to begin cleaning the tubes to remove soot and debris. Soot, which is a product of incomplete combustion, can coat the fireside surface of the tubes and will inhibit heat transfer to the water in the boiler. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, even a 1 16th inch layer of soot can reduce your boiler's efficiency by up to 4.5%, which is why it's important to ensure your fireside surfaces are clean. In addition to reducing your boiler's efficiency, soot, when combined with moisture, will create nitric acid. This nitric acid will damage your tubes and eventually cause the tubes to fail. By cleaning the tubes manually with brushes rather than using a brush machine, our technicians are able to feel for any tube defects during the cleaning process. The fireside door gaskets are then removed and surfaces cleaned to allow for new gasketing to be installed when the doors are sealed. After the tubes have been cleaned, each tube is then inspected for signs of damage or leaks. Next, we'll work on cleaning the water side of the boiler. After the boiler has been drained, all the boiler's handholes and manways are opened to facilitate the removal of the scale inside the boiler. As the water in the boiler heats up and turns to steam, the minerals and dissolved solids remain in the vessel and over time will form scale on the heating surfaces and tubes within the boiler. This scale can allow air pockets to form, which will allow oxygen to attack the water side of the tubes. This is called pitting, which will compromise the tube and eventually cause a tube failure. Excessive scale can also cause the tubes to overheat and become deformed. Now, let's move on to the low water cutoff. This low water cutoff is a float type. There are multiple low water cutoff configurations, but in general, the purpose of this device is to feed water to the boiler when the water level drops by closing the electrical circuit for the feed water pump starter. And if the water level drops even further, the electrical circuit that powers the burner will be opened and the burner will shut down to protect the boiler from firing without enough water in the vessel. At least once a year, the low water cutoff should be serviced by opening and inspecting the float chamber cleaning out the bowl of any mud or buildup, then inspecting and cleaning the associated piping. In addition to annual servicing of the low water cutoff, blowdown procedures should be performed by on-site staff on a weekly basis to help reduce buildup in the float chamber and piping. If the low water cutoff is not maintained properly, the float can get stuck and could allow the boiler to fire without enough water in the vessel. This is known as dry firing which will cause severe damage to the tubes. On a cast iron boiler, the sections can potentially crack or burn up the gasketing between the sections. If the boiler were to fire for an extended period with little or no water, then additional water is fed to the vessel. The boiler could explode due to the rapid expansion of steam. This is why inspecting, cleaning, and checking operation of your low water cutoff device is absolutely essential to ensure safe operation of your boiler. After all these maintenance procedures are completed, the boiler is then reassembled with new gaskets, filled with water, fired up and inspected to ensure that all gaskets are holding. All debris generated from the washout is then removed and cleaned up. A boiler washout is just one of many critical maintenance steps necessary to keep your boiler running reliably, efficiently, and safely. 
Contact your Hayes Mechanical representative to learn more about your boiler's maintenance needs. As always, this session of Hayes University is presented for informational purposes only and is intended to allow our clients to understand the details of the skilled and professional work provided by Hayes Mechanical. The procedures covered in this video should only be performed by properly trained boiler technicians. Thank you for tuning in to this session of Hayes University. If you would like to see future episodes, please follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel.